Well, it's early. It's too early. I've been up since like four. This is nothing else to do. I'm gonna make breakfast and show you how I do it. I usually have soup for breakfast if I can. So the first thing I do is I just turn the burner on. I'm not gonna sit there. And put chicken stock, chicken broth, or water, or some combination of those. So look at the sodium content of the chicken broth. So this has a lot of sodium. And when stuff cooks for a while, all the water uh, comes out of it. All the water boils out. So this is already pretty salty. When it cooks over there, it's just gonna be more salty. So what I do, so what I do, because I know it's gonna cook for a while, is I kind of do a half and half thing. So I do sort of some chicken broth. You don't need a lot if you're just cooking for one person. Like that. And then a little bit of water. Just to kind of buffer it out a little. Throw it up about a third of the way. just gonna cook for a little while so now you need your other ingredients and you can kind of stack them up so this is cranberry sauce I'll get to that later and then I'm gonna put some leftover chicken in it so you have like leftover chicken and, and gravy I usually just crack an egg in there too <clears throat> just because egg sort of colors the broth Egg, your cranberry sauce. Now you need your vegetable. And this is just green cabbage. And the only other thing that I usually put in is couscous. So put in about a quarter cup of that. So this is gonna come to a boil. Uh, basically now you just put in stuff as you need to cook it. So. This stuff just needs to come to a boil and it'll cook pretty quickly. All this will cook pretty quickly. The cabbage will cook really quickly. The chicken, uh, any meat you put in, especially if it's on a bone, uh, probably benefits from being cooked longer. So I'm gonna go ahead and throw some of that in there right now. You realize whenever I shoot a video that I'm essentially shooting with one hand, so I just sort of realized that the other day that that might be why. Um, why some of my video turns out weird is because I don't have any, I mean, it's me filming, just holding on to my phone. Maybe in the future I'll research different amounts or something. But, so anything that's on a bone like that, you're going to want to cook for a while. So just let that sit in there. Put some of the gravy in there, that stuff's pretty damn good. Okay. And that's why I only fill this up to a third because as you put stuff in, it's going to get... Uh, more and more full. Now you're just going to cut up cabbage. Uh, this I already had sort of quartered. I quartered it the other day, so just take out a section. That's all you really need. Cabbage will raise your water level quite significantly, so don't put in more than you can fit, obviously. You have your cabbage out. Here's your cabbage all cut up. Cut it pretty fine, but the more fine you cut it, the more it'll act as like a thickener. This is now boiling pretty good. That's kind of what you wanted to do. I'm going to turn it down a little bit from high medium to medium high. Start stirring it around. What this does is, is, is it'll clean the bones really well, which is what you want. I'm going to want to throw a little bit of this in there. I used to measure it, now I just eyeball it, but sort of a quarter of a cup like that. And you want to put your cabbage in now too. So now you've got your cabbage and your meat and basically anything that takes longer than like 30 seconds to cook you don't have in there. Uh, notice how far up the water levels come. That's why you don't fill it up that much to begin with. And then, what I think is 
one of the most important things is to, whenever you're doing something savory, I really like to balance it with something sweet. So if it's soup I'm making with leftover chicken like I am today, or turkey, I usually use cranberry sauce. I have this really good homemade cranberry sauce that's just frozen cranberries, uh, water, and sugar. It's been cooked. I like to use cranberry sauce because the liquid is pretty sweet, but the berries still say sour. So when you cook it, it kind of offsets a little bit of the salty savory with the with the sweet sort of sauce. But the berries actually kind of get sour when you when you cook them because you're essentially boiling all the sugar that's in them out of them. So that's really nice. So you get sort of like a little bit of a sweeter broth and a sweeter meat, and then you get these really sour berries. You can also use cranberry sauce for, for beef. If you make like a fatty beef soup, I, I, I'd use it for that. Also, if you don't have that, use a little bit of maple syrup. That's This is sort of what I use when I don't cranberry sauce. So, you know, you want to put in just like a teaspoonful or so. So you can use uh, maple syrup. Cranberry sauce, I mean, and you can use other things. If I'm doing something with pork, maybe I'll put some, like, fresh apple in there. If you just, you know, dice up some apple. If you're making something more Asian-inspired, uh, I usually do, like, honey soy sauce. I've used, not this particular stuff, but I've used dried fruit before. It's actually a, a thing in, like, I want to say the Middle Ages to cook meat with fruit. You know, there's some recipes, some English recipes, where you boil a uh, chicken with currants and raisins and prunes and, and stuff like that. And that's all you do to it. And so, you know, if it's not that out there, I guess. Flip that. And kind of like the longer you cook it too, the better it gets because the berries will get more sour. There we go. So let that cook for a little bit. Let it sort of cook down a little bit. The water levels come up like a lot. There's only about an inch away from the tops. So just let it cook for like a few minutes. Five minutes is fine. If you want to cook faster, you just turn the heat up. If you want to if you want to let it simmer, you can turn the heat down. Or you do other things. So I'm not sure if you can see, but this is boiled down quite a bit. It's been about, you know, 10-15 minutes. Um, I usually let it go for longer just because, you know, I sort of forget about it. Um, one thing that's interesting is that cranberries float, which is why when you see them, if you've ever seen them out on the bog, how they pick them is, is they flood the bogs and all the cranberries float to the surface. So it just looks like this big red pond. So that's sort of how you can tell it's done too when you're making the sauce is once the cranberries start floating. I'm not sure how that works. So anyway, now what you want to do, the last thing you want to do is turn the heat off and just let that chill, the heat's off. And now what I always do Last step is I put an egg in there. Like I, I crack an egg in there, and that when you once you stir the egg in, it'll turn the broth white, and it'll also just sort of bind everything together a little bit, and, and it's just tasty. So the best way to crack an egg, I found, is to hit it on a flat surface, not like an angled surface. And what that does is it'll break the shell but leave the membrane intact, so you won't get shell in whatever you're making. So. Now you stir it relatively vigorously, and as you can see, the egg turns the broth sort of milky, and, and a little bit thicker, and that's not what you want. And once you pour it into a bowl, that's sort of how it looks. So you've got cranberries, cabbage, little bits of cabbage, which sort of makes the broth thicker. Uh, couscous and chicken and an egg.